there's some really cool innovation happening in the NFT space. It's not it's just a simple JPEG. In today's episode, Dragon and I, we're going to be talking about some of the cool NFT innovations that are happening in the space. Dragon, you ready to get into it? Totally, man. This is like, once again, so cool to look at this from the vantage point of kind of a observer and pioneer. It's moving fast, but it's very exciting. NFTs are changing the world and change can feel complicated and scary. But listen, you don't need a computer science degree. You don't need to learn how to code. You just need practical skills to win. If you are here, you are in the 1% of humans that are preparing for this major cultural shift. We're going to keep it fun. We're going to keep it light. We're going to make it practical. Welcome to NFTs Made Simple. Just a reminder, we are not financial advisors. This is not financial advice. You should do your own research. Hey, let's get into it. Right. So Dragon, in all the copious research that we've been doing, I'm seeing some really, really cool NFT projects, projects that I kind of expected to see five years out are already happening today. So I'll let you fire it up first. What are some cool innovations that you're seeing in the NFT space? It's interesting when you, if you go do like a Google search and you type in what can be an NFT, you'll end up just finding out all, all, all these videos and information about how to mint and create NFTs, but there's not a lot because it's happening right in front of us right now. So it's important first to understand like what the, the most common version of, of what an NFT is. And, and also then Mark and I will go over some just crazy stuff that's happening as, as we're watching, you know, the NFT boom that's happening right now and everybody's aware of it. It's mostly focused on things like digital assets and, you know, I think most people are noticing that 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 includes things like gifts and images, but we're also seeing NFTs be created out of songs and videos. And it's also, this is also including historical moments. This is really interesting because now as a listener, you're, you're thinking like, wait a second, you know, I can get now at this point, if you're following along, I can get the idea that I can take a picture of like an ape or something like that and I can mint it and own it and sell it back and forth. But how would I mint and create an NFT, a non-fungible token for a historical moment, like in music or, or sporting events and stuff like that? So think about this for a second. How do, how do you do that? You know, you're doing this by making these things into digital ownable assets as well. So let, let's put it into perspective. So let's say I own, and, and this is going to just just crack, the, you know, loosen the can, you know, or loosen the lid on the jar right now, because now you're going to realize that anything can be an NFT. So let's look at a historical moment, right? You can watch it on TV. You could you could save it as a video or an image on your phone, or you could even watch it on YouTube. Those things you don't own, right? Because they're they're just out there. You can watch them. You can say, here, it's on my phone, but you don't own it. Therefore, you can't sell it. But if the person that owns that moment, right, the, the, like, let's say it's Michael Jordan doing a, a dunk or something like that, or the owner of a basketball team selling like, you know, them cutting the, the, the net or something, and they take that video or that, that moment captured and they go and mint it and put it on the blockchain. Now it's something that can be sold. So that just opens up a whole new can of worms. And I, and I know Mark's got some things to share about what's being made NFTs right now, but I just want you to realize that if you own something and you basically make it an NFT, and it could even be like the contract that you have on the purchase of, a, of your unique home or, or anything like that, and you make it an NFT, now it's something that somebody can purchase, own, and sell because it lives on the blockchain. So anything goes now. Yeah, well, I mean, and you're seeing this happen. The NBA is really experimenting here. So if you see like, you know, I don't know, who's someone that dunks a lot? LeBron James is laying down to dunk over someone's face. Or you take like the Michael Jordan where he shoots that, that game-winning shot during his flu game. Like when you see these types of events happening, if you own the NFT, well, now you own the rights to it. So anytime that gets shared or replayed on ESPN, you're getting a cut of it, right? Similar to a way that, 
you know, a baseball card or basketball card would get get sold. So it's, it's just really interesting to see these innovations. Another cool thing that happened just very recently in my home state of Florida, the first home was sold as an NFT. 650 grand in crypto was paid for it by auction. So you're starting to see homes actually sold on the blockchain and solidifying the blockchain using crypto. I think that is, is amazing. It's, it's so, so cool. And the, the CEO of this company that, uh, the CEO of this company, Jarrett Preston is the CEO of Adonius. I'll put a link below Adonius. I'm probably mispronouncing it. And that's what he's, what, what he's doing. He's, he's creating luxury experiences. He's selling mega expensive things all in crypto. And, and his stance is that within the next five years, every major real estate firm is going to be actively transacting with crypto within five years. Digital transactions are growing statistically 50% each year. So you're going to see more and more types of transactions. I mean, and, and I don't know about you, Dragon, but I feel like that home value is going to skyrocket because it is the first home in the United States to be sold with crypto on the blockchain. I think that just, I mean, that is going to 10x the value of that home because now it's an actual historical symbol of this revolution of DeFi that we're going through right now. Yeah, you know, this this is really fascinating now. And I know that a lot of people are listening to this saying, I don't get it. You know, <clears throat> I don't get, like, even if you understand the concept of making something a digital asset and making it, you know, something that you can purchase and authentically own. And as its rarity goes up, you can sell it. You can understand that process, but still you're thinking like, why the hell would I buy a piece of digital land or something. So I'm going to put the, put it into a cool context. So I find that the, some of the biggest breakthroughs that I have, I take advantage of the fact that, you know, Mark and I are daddies. And if you ask your kids questions and you just get that completely free from knowing what the hell they're talking about answer, it really helps make things clear. So I said to my son last night, I'm talking to him and he, my son, God forbid he ever finds out that I talk about him, but he, he digs on the Fortnite thing. And uh, he might be a little old for that, you know. But anyway, he, he loves Fortnite. And I was asking him, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, when you buy something in that world, right, what is it that you buy? And then I was joking and I go, oh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. When I pay for something that you buy, what the hell am I paying for? Because I get a ding. And, and he goes like this. He looks at me and smiles because he knows that, like, he's tacking up my card. And he goes, skins. And I'm like, what the hell is a skin? So he says, yeah. you know, like if I have a Fortnite character, I can purchase like skins. And I go, and what does that do? Does that make you stronger? And he goes, no, not really. And I go, well, what the hell does it do? He goes, it makes me look cooler. And I go, okay, understood. So you're, you're going around and, you know, in Fortnite, they're doing all this crazy stuff where they're killing people and teabagging them and all this like completely out of control out there. But I said to him, I go, can you sell that skin to somebody else? And he, and he stopped and said, no. And I go, when you purchase that skin, I said, you're spending money on it, so it's got value, but are there a limited amount of those skins? And he goes, no, anybody can buy them. So in that world right now, money can buy anything. That's why you can't resell it. But let me tell you something right now. Don't be surprised when Fortnite and Minecraft which is the same thing as the metaverse. Our kids are playing in the metaverse without even knowing it, are all of a sudden going to say there's only a hundred of these skins. And now when my son buys it, he's going to be buying it with cryptocurrency without even knowing, because, you know, parents, beware, you're going to start getting your <laughs> cryptocurrency dinged by your kids, right? That's what's coming. And then all of a sudden, your kid's going to own this thing and you're not going to be so pissed off about it until the day that your kid actually goes and sells it and makes money and profits off of it because it's an NFT and it's got rarity. So I heard Gary Vee say this the other day, and this, this is really, really hit home. The people that don't get NFTs right now, it's because you're from a different generation and you are used to transacting and placing value on different things. You know, you, you like to have things and, I mean, it's kind of like people... I don't know about you, Mark, but I, when I buy a book, I like to actually buy the book. But everybody's doing digital books and audio books. So you can see that trend right now. But the new generation, and this is what Gary Vee speaks very passionately about, 
He says, the new generation is not necessarily interested in buying the same kind of stuff that you guys used to buy. He says, the new generation is comfortable and interested in buying digital assets. So if you really want to know the explosive power about NFTs, it's not all of us adults playing in this. We're just trying to make money. Be aware that our children are conditioned already to live very comfortably in this world. So this is about that concept of being a pioneer. This is about to explode all over the place. And there's a great but opportunity. I, you know, I, I want to kind of give you a little bit of pushback on that, right? Because I, I do agree that the younger generation is more conditioned because they've been living in the Minecraft type of universe where avatars and skins equal status. It's the same reason why you buy that expensive watch or the expensive shirt. It's because of status. But what's different about NFTs, as we just saw with this Gulfport home selling, is it's not simply digital. The applications of purchasing an NFT are not just in this imaginary world. They actually impact real life, in-person, flesh and blood type of situations. I'm going to give you another example. Martin Scorsese, pretty pretty popular, pretty successful movie producer, has basically vowed that his next movie that he does with Niels Jewell is going to be an NFT. And they're not going to fund it through traditional Hollywood means. They're not going to a Hollywood studio. They're funding it off the back of an NFT. So what they're doing is they're selling 10,000 NFTs to the public. And when you purchase, you actually get special value. So for example, you might get a cut of the box off at profits. So if the, if the movie just explodes and goes huge, you're going to be getting a cut off that. You're going to be getting extra licensing rights. You're going to get, potentially, depending on which NFT you purchase, you might get a chance to be at the premiere of the movie. You might get to talk with actors. You might get to go to special events for that movie. And, you know, you don't know, in some of these cases with these NFT drops, you don't know exactly what you're going to be getting on the back end, but you're getting real life value. It's not just this imaginary JPEG. You're actually getting a real life. It's a contract. It's a smart contract, which gives you real life value. Hey, what's up? Mark here. Just want to take you on a quick break with a resource I think is really going to help you. Some of the concepts that we're covering in the show sound really complicated and really technical. But listen, you don't need to code. You don't need to get a master's degree in computer science. All you need to do is have the right resources. We're going to make it simple. We're going to make it easy. I've got a link below. Go to www.nftsmadesimple.com. That's nftsmadesimple.com. You're going to get a free cheat sheet there. It's 100% free. What are you waiting for? Go get the cheat sheet. It's going. We're going to break down some of the key definitions in ways that are really practical and really simple. Go to nftsmadesimple.com right now to get your free cheat sheet. That's nftsmadesimple.com. All right, let's get back into the show. You know, speaking of Gary Vaynerchuk, he's got his Vayner friends and he's got his initial launch, but he's also going to be doing more launches so that people can buy in because, I mean, those things have just exploded in value, his V friends. But one of the things that Gary has said is, listen, I got big ambitions. I see theme parks in my future, like Disney style theme parks. Don't you think that by owning one of my original NFTs, you'll get lifetime access to my theme parks? So it's, it's not just a JPEG. I just really want to hammer that home with people. It's not just a JPEG. It's access, it's status, it's real life value and implications. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's that concept of utility and, and community yes. memberships and stuff. And, you know, another interesting thing about that is, you know, you just brought up V Friends, but I, I've been looking at this, when, when everybody purchased those, the utility that was connected to it was VCon, you know, and gaining access to it. So there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of membership things. But another part of Gary's smart contract, and, you know, I think saying he's smart is, is overlooking the fact that he just works harder than everybody else. But you'll notice that <clears throat> that gains you access to three years right. of VCon. So Gary's, Gary's smart. So after three years, <clears throat> you're still going to own tons of value as owning that, that NFT. But that gig, that utility is over. But just like Mark said, at that point, he'll be able to roll that over into something else like his amusement park or his, his restaurants and stuff like that. So it's just unbelievable 
what is happening right now. And just back to that idea of just being aware of, of, of our children and, and us, you know, it's one of these things where I understand that people at varying degrees get it or don't get it. But I just want everybody to know it's happening whether you like it or not, just like the internet. So it's definitely worth putting some time into. Yeah. And I definitely want to keep revisiting this because there are just cool projects coming out all the time. And I want to keep highlighting the ones like the movie being produced, the home being sold, super exciting to me. A lot of musical artists are saying, I don't need to go to, you know, Def Jam Records or whatever. I can actually crowdfund. So there's this concept of crowdfunding projects through NFTs that's happening right before your eyes. Dragon, what do you say we get into our next episode here? And by the way, if you're enjoying the show, hit the subscribe button right now. Right now is the time to hit subscribe. Show us some love. Give us that five-star rating and hit the like button. Hit the bell. All that good stuff. Show us some love. Hit the like if you're on YouTube and uh, make sure you subscribe wherever the heck you are. Dragon, you ready for the next episode, brother? Let's do it. Let's breathe some hot fire, brother.